Welcome back to Nightcap Chat, the pop culture podcast talk all things comic books, video games, movies, TV shows, and more. Today, we are talking the newly announced Lord of the Rings movie. I'm Blade O'Neill. I'm Lance O'Neill. And of course, before we dive into it, just want to thank everyone for taking the time to like, share, and subscribe to Nightcap Chat. Tell your friends about it. Really appreciate your your support. And Lance is just Lance is just dropping things in the in the Nightcap Chat studio. He's, he's, he's holding my boomerang. All right. Yes. You gotta. You, you haven't recorded in the studio for a while, and you you can't use the microphone. Well, I'm just not. It's just gotta get re reacclimated to being in the studio. In the studio. Um, so we have a special guest here with us today. Um, he is not only a teacher who taught both of us, he is also our father, taught history and a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff. Introducing. I'm Michael O'Neill. Yes, I, I, I did teach two uh, semesters of J.R.R. Tolkien, not just Lord of the Rings, but the Silmarillion as well. Uh, yeah, and I am an anthropologist. Uh, and I've, I read Lord of the Rings 47 times, but it's been a while. It's been a few <laughs> years. And I read the Silmarillion uh, 20 times. So I do. I have some background on, the, uh, on uh, what we're discussing, although I think the new... Uh, it's, it's a series, right? No, it's a movie. So, a movie. and oh, we'll, we'll, so. we'll dive a little more into well, that. Is it, uh, it's from the really from the appendices more than it is from Silmarillion, I believe. Right? Absolutely. And this, so if you haven't noticed, we, we usually fly off the cuff a little bit uh, on Nightcap Chat, and nothing we talk about ever really requires much research. But I actually did research oh, uh, this time, very limited research. Um, so, um, okay. This first of all, before we before we get into everything with this movie, they announced a new movie. New line announced a new movie. Yeah. Right? Now, this is completely confusing because we have an Amazon TV series. Right. And I saw a rumor recently saying that the movie rights are still with Warner Brothers slash New Line, and I think this now proves it. So crazy things happening here. This newly announced movie, which is animated. It's going to be an anime oh, style. I, I was aware of that. It's going to be an anime style movie, which takes place with in the continuity of the Peter Jackson films, and Peter Jackson is consulting um, just to kind of keep I everything. That, yeah. um, it's going to be directed by the guy who did Ghost in the Shell. It was, it was right, really, I, I saw that, and that was really anime. well done. Yes. for a low budget film, mm-hmm. they really did a great job with that. So. No, 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 the anime. Oh, the anime. The anime that you know it was. What? Based- I, I, I actually <laughs> have those and haven't watched them yet. Oh, they're really I good. Have them. They're really good. Okay, and we talked about, we brought up Ghost in the Shell a couple of episodes, or was that one episode ago? I don't even know. Everything's I love that whole storyline. That's great. Stuff. It is great. I think it was two episodes ago. What yeah. was the last episode? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the, the comic book thing. Oh, right. Seems the 9.8. Yeah. What, are we, what are we thinking? It's the most expensive episode of Nightcap Chat. How can we forget? <laughs> oh, that, that episode of Nightcap Chat costs just under $300. <laughs> so, you know, we, we haven't, one thing I noticed, we haven't even mentioned the name of the movie. So, yet. yes, it's Lord of the Rings War of the Rohirrim. Um, so, so, okay, yes, I'm, I'm going to, I'm just. I can't shut up about Lord of the Rings, and I'm trying not to go off on, on a Another rant. Tangent. I have a tendency to do that myself. So. so I just want to pull myself back for a second. Um, this is going to take place within the continuity of the Peter Jackson films, which is cool. It's confusing, though, I think, for the general audience because we have something coming from Amazon that has nothing to do with anything. So that, to me, makes the Amazon series a lot less appealing if we're going to have all of these great animated films that take place. Because, I mean, Tolkien has all kinds of lores right. and the appendices, and obviously that's where this, where this stems It's from. amazing to me that, that what they chose... I, I, I believe me, I'm thrilled yes. that this is coming out. On the on the other hand, I, I just have to say, for my own prejudice, yeah. that if they had to pick a topic, picking the middlemen is not my favorite topic. You know, that, I mean, not even to use the the Numenarians or the Dunedin. You know, is so if you're going to use men, you go from the Edain, not from the middlemen. And, you know, Aragon actually mentions in Lord of the Rings that the the writers of Rohan, the Rohirrim, are more closely related to the, Bard, the Bardings and the Bjornings. 
Yeah. So they're the middlemen, but they're really cool history. Yes. So don't get me wrong. It's just if I'm if if I'm going to pick a uh, a genre within Lord of the Rings, it wouldn't be my first choice. But if they're doing that with the idea of going and, and hitting other things along the way, yeah, you have to start with that because if you did it later, it would, would might not be as fun. But there's some really cool stuff in their history, and there's really cool stuff that they're going to be filming. Yes, and I think I think we said perfectly. Like it's not the most interesting thing we could have ever gotten, but to me, that's a potentially very exciting pick yeah. because even if they can do well enough with this. It's less exciting down the road if they have more exciting things planned. So you don't want to start with, you know, the Infinity Gauntlet when you're going to go right into, uh, I don't know, no, Captain yeah, Marvel. Yeah. And for those of you who, who the, when we're saying Rohirrim, we're talking about the writers of Rohan. Yeah. For those of you who watched the movie or read the books and maybe didn't delve as much into the appendices. Do you, what do you know about before they were even in Rohan because Rohan itself was part of Gondor. So this this movie is going to follow the adventures of Helm Hammerhand. No, I understand that, yeah. but, but what do you know about them even before that? Because they fought in the Nothing. wars, the, the people, these people fought in the wars against Angmar the Witch King, mm -hmm. and one of the people that the kings are descended from, it was actually a king, but they didn't have Rohan at the time, actually slayed the dragon Scatha, which was the last dragon besides Smog. Okay. And then they had a falling out with the dwarves because the dwarves wanted the treasure. He took the treasure because he killed the dragon. Mm -hmm. And he just, as a to slap them in the face, sent them with the teeth of Scatha. Wow. And that's why, and I, the reason, the only reason why I'm talking about that is because it shows you why they have this not such a friendly relationship with dwarves. They also not very friendly relationship with elves. And I'm not 100% sure, but they're very near Mirkwood. And even in some of their battles, uh, the elves actually helped them. They sent out a mist in one of their battles and actually uh, helped them. Helm, them Helm specifically? Not Helm. It was, okay. uh, this was later. But, you know, as far as, too, it's interesting even where Helm comes from. Because when Earl the Young, it's mentioned too in Lord of the Rings, Earl the Young. Yeah. Was, was asked to fight uh, for Gondor in a battle mm -hmm. and because they had fought in the older wars. And he didn't even expect them to say yes. And they said yes. This young king, who was considered the first king of Rohan, goes down and fights for them and, is, and, and he dies in the battle. And because of what they did for them, they, he gives them Rohan. He gives them... He gives them mm -hmm, that land, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And his second, the second, and just the only reason I want to mention this couple of, the next two kings are interesting because the ne second king then is uh, Brago. Yes. Who Aragorn's horse yes. is And when he met, remember, if you remember, if anyone was wondering why he says to the horse, you, Brago, you have a kingly name, the second king of Gondor. Yeah. His son, uh, Balder. Mm-hmm. Go, it goes and he he says he's going to take the paths of the dead. He wanted to find the treasures and things of the paths of the dead and never returns. And in the book, when Aragon and and uh, Legolas and and Gimli and the Dunedin, the forty Dunedin that are with him, go in, they see his his uh, armor there and his skeleton and that he had been scratching at the walls, mm -hmm. or whatever. So those guys are an interesting. Th so we're, now we get to Helm. Helm is the ninth king. Hmm. in that line from from Earl the Young. Yep. And uh, I have a little uh, little cheat sheet here. I have yeah. uh, a dictionary of Tolkien that David Day published. And there's a little there's a little short passage about, about Helm. You know, he was he was born in uh, twenty six ninety one of the Third Age and he was the ninth king of Rohan. Um, he ruled for seventeen years. Well there was a lot of there was a lot of confrontation in his in his uh, during the time of his realm, and that's why his kingship was so short. It's interesting, too, what a badass this guy is. You know, mm -hmm. he here's a guy that, you know, um, they there was another group who were the Dumlingers who he had a they did they had a uh, a rough relationship, and they were over toward the the area I think that was Isengard in that area they were, um, and one of the kings there, and his name was Wolf, right, Wolf comes to him and he wants him to he wants uh he wants his son 
to marry Helm's daughter. And he actually comes to the Metaseld uh-huh. to ask him that. And and basically, um, Helm's like, get the heck out of here. And he actually takes him outside and he punches him in the face and kills him. Wow. And that starts this war between them. Mm-hmm. And then we get... Uh, I forgot who backs them up, but they end up with, they end up at what's called at that time the Hornburg, and you mm-hmm. even, actually in Lord of the Rings itself it's mentioned as the Hornburg a couple of times because they I believe it's the um, I don't know if it's Theoden or Gandalf who says that the Hornburg has never fallen as long as men defended it, and it's called Helm's Deep. But the mentioning was because that was even prior to it being called called Helm's yeah, Deep. Yeah, I mean even in the movies right. um, when he's in the movie specifically for more general audience purposes. Um, if you watch the extended version, he, he does refer to, it, I think more than once, but he says to Saruman, you know, even as they lay dead against the gates of the Hornburg are, are avenged, right. you know, we're specifically right. referring to Helm's Deep. Um, but the, the whole battle that's being referred to right here where, um, where, uh, Helm Hammerhand and the, the Rohirrim fight the, the Dune Lending, I don't know if yes. that's the plural of yeah. that, um, it's the long, it's the long winter. Which I know people are going to be like, oh, Game and, of Thrones. Well, the long winter too includes the fact that they, the Dunlendings, had taken Metaseld, mm-hmm. and so now they're also killing people in the fields, the, the farmers, and everything. And there's a hard winter, and and Helm is and his men are held up in the Hornburg, and them assailing in the them assailing the the uh, the Dunlendings assailing, they kill um, Helm's son. Mm. And now, but now that they're 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 in there, they see that um, Helm begins to wither, like mm. you know. And just imagine, there's like here's a guy who gets gaunt and withered, but yet he would blow his horn at night, and then go out into the camps of the Dunlingers and kill Dunlingers yep. with his bare hands. Yes. This is a guy who's like a shadow of himself. Yep. And it's interesting too because there's a character in the movie that they leave out from. Uh, from the book is another marshal that is who actually um, Gandalf goes out to find him. Mm-hmm. And when he attacks, helps attack at Helm's Deep, he comes with him. And it was one of the other marshals of the, of the, uh, and I'm the, now his name escapes me. Um, he went out to find him. But when they mention this guy, they say in him, Helm the Hammerhand mm-hmm. was said to have, yeah. you know, been like reborn, like mm-hmm. in that. And I, 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 now I can't believe I can't think of his name, but it's a really interesting character. And it yep. just shows you too, when you read these things about how, how strong Helm was, you know, and, and, and you know, it's pretty amazing stuff. So if you watch the movie, there, there is a reference to Helm Hammerhand. And yeah. like he talks about his horn being blown one final time. So in, in the Peter Jackson books, I Tolkien's very descriptive, so I, I have to go back and see what the description of this horn is. But Gimli goes to blow it, and this thing is gigantic. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if they're gonna make this really tie into the Peter Jackson films. Is he gonna have this giant freaking horn, you know, or, around him? You know, before he goes and into into battle and stuff, you know, I mean, it's it's got to be right, I and mean, that's something that's probably a lot easier to to animate. Yeah, yeah. Than have. yeah, I think that's the big thing about the 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 film is that if you're going to do it and it's an animation, you really don't have to worry about like, Practical oh, are they going to take the time to redo this the right? Like, it's going to be done the right way. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, why would you take time no to make something new? Right? There's no excuse to to make Helm's Deep look any different than it was in the film, right? Yeah. Well, so it should be the well besides newer maybe. Right, but it just you know. it all should look how it did. Everything should look how it should. It shouldn't be like oh well we had a for for movie constraints you know it's a, yes. it's an animation so it sh- everything should look great. Hundred percent. The actor should be good. You know the, the, there should be no excuse really. And I also feel like going off on a side note, I feel like they're rushed. They said that there are. What was the they're, verbiage that they use? They're uh, fast fast tracking it. it. So all right, so they're fast tracking so it. They're rushing. It. So they're <laughs> somewhat rushing it, which can worry you. But to me, that just sounds like we want to put this out before Amazon gets their stuff out because we're worried that Amazon's not going to do well. Yes. So at least people that are interested in the Amazon, they might watch this first and then they'll watch the Amazon thing. And be like, no, I'm going to stick, but I'll still stick with the the yes. other stuff. Whereas mm-hmm. if Amazon bombed, they'll be like, oh, new line. Yeah, whatever. I just don't feel like, 
You know yeah, what I mean? People not, might get upset not and not even try it. That's a good point. Because I honestly, I am worried about the Amazon series. We haven't heard a lot. and They've put a lot of money on this line. I don't really have faith in it just because I feel like they're they're going to make stuff up. Yeah, to me, it's a money grab. That's what it seems like. They're is, going for I mean, it as it, a money grab. That's a big risk for a money grab. Well, when you're worth billions and billions of dollars, it's, you know. I guess that's the perks of being part of Amazon, right? I don't, I don't know. I don't want, I don't, we don't know anything about it, really. Aside that it takes place in the second age and some of the cast members, we don't know who's playing who. You know, with this one, I mean, granted, this is decades and decades before um, the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy. Right. So as far as returning cast members, especially for these real hero and stuff, I mean, there's only so many people who are alive, let alone have to do with the story. I well, mean... I, I think the big thing about this is, like you guys were talking about, it's has potential to lead into other things and yes. other storylines coming off of it kind of like a, like a marvel thing where like you have iron man and you do your thor movie and then you know maybe you do like a big avengers kind of a thing you know what i mean i mean to me the most exciting thing is you're doing this like an anime style animation and you don't have to worry about how things translate to live action you can do like a multi-movie simmerillion Right. Right. And, and focus you can, on different you, parts you, of the you stories. Can, you can definitely produce these things quicker. You're, you're, mm-hmm. The acting is all voice, and it's about getting it. Mean, I mean, you're saving yourself a fortune in, in just trying to do all the special effects and time constraints. Yeah. So you can put that out. Because if they're going to do the Silmarillion correctly, I don't see them doing it maybe as a Silmarillion. Maybe no. there's a, a Silmarillion slant, and then, then like, um, Baron colon, and this yeah. is Baron and Luthien, right? Or, or the story of Turin. That's or more those exciting, kind of things. I think. It's, <sighs> I almost feel like the, the introductory, introduction, the introductory parts of, uh, the Silmarillion, you do the way Lord of the Ring opens, opens. The way they did that, where they explained the battles and these things happened. Oh, you happened. mean like the, the creation of Middle Earth? And, right, the whole creation in the beginning. There was Uru the One, who, you know, who in Arda was called, you know. Sure. And then, you know, show how the powerful beings who come down, Manwe and, and these other beings, and get kind of get into and maybe maybe spend five minutes on the creation of the earth and the tumult between them and Melkor in the beginning. And then you start getting into, you have to start, I guess, with the coming of man, I think at that point, uh, the coming of, of the elves and then have stuff with the elves. And so you can introduce the Silmarils and those kind of things. Yeah. And but- I don't know if you, if you do that first or cause this doesn't have to be, like, especially since they're, they're doing something, that's only maybe a few hundred years before Lord of the Rings. So it shows you that if they're doing this first, th- this doesn't have to be in order. Oh, no, absolutely. You know, so I, I think it's a matter of, you know, you, you, you're you doing the Rohirrim first because, like we said, if you did them later, they would be anticlimactic maybe, even though it's really interesting and good stuff. So I think you almost follow what can out, you know, what could be more magnificent than the prior ones? Where, you know, does Baron and Luthien come before or after Turin, you know, and Hurin, you know, those things, the Sons of Hurin, and the, that, that, those chapters. Where does, do you do them, um, some of them in, in sync so that, you know, you do things like um, the Fall of Gondolin and, and those kind of things, you know? I, I think, uh, I think you just have to break it down and see what is going to be the most digestible and what would catch, like what would be the easiest for an audience to consume. And then you can always go back, kind of like what you did with Star Wars, right? You Are did, you they did agree because you just used like two different, uh, you know, verbs using eating, starving, eating, <laughs> digesting. Because <laughs> um, like, like, in, like in Star Wars, Right, you do episode four, five, and six, uh-huh. and then you go back and you tell the story of Darth Vader right. and yeah. him growing up. So I feel like if and they're jump back, and then you jump back, and then you can jump forward or whatever. So I feel and like it, it wouldn't be a big deal if you 
did the Cimmerillion at, at certain points. If, if it if it makes sense to get an audience, like if certain things you're like, I don't know if this is going to do well or it might not, might be a little confusing. Maybe you just do it after, you know, you would do it after you would do other things. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, well, look at, here's, here's another, um, another great example, I think, is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They weren't, they were going in order, but they weren't afraid to be like, oh yeah, Captain Marvel was here in the 90s. Okay. Captain America was World War Two. You know, like everything was very clear cut, you know, right. like it's just the, the order of consumption doesn't have to be chronological. Yeah. The only thing that's hard with that though, is because like when you're watching that, you understand it's from a certain World era yeah. because it's in our world. Yeah. Whereas the, in Lord of the Rings, you're, you're going to be like, oh, the, I mean, there's grass and there's trees. Like, it's no different than, you know what I mean? You're not like, oh, look at those cars that are in the... That's fair. So it'd be kind of hard for that, I think, that's, from jumping here and yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Then, I mean, I don't care if the Cimmerillion's all done, like, across five movies. You know, let's say some kind of first movie introduced the creation of Middle Earth and, and the Cimmerillions and stuff. Do a Baron and Luthien movie, do a Fall of Gondolin movie. Um, Children of Huron. Yeah, I, so I think on. I think when the Silmarils are involved, I think those have to have, perhaps have some kind of order, so you know what you're dealing with. But I mean, those are like the Infinity Stones of the Silmarillion, right? Right. right. Well, well at, at least at least introduce them and where they came from first <laughs> in in a, in an earlier film, like where how how they're created by Fiennes, you know, yeah. from the trees of, of Valinor of uh, of Valinor. And so at least you know what you're dealing with late in later times, and even the maybe the curse upon the sons of Fener and the the, the oath uh-huh. of the, the sons. So you get an idea of what they are when everybody's fighting over them and going for them later. So I mean, I think those things can now be in a different order once they've been established what they are. Yeah, yeah. I also hope you know? it, it doesn't yeah. hurt them. That like people are, might be like, oh, they have strong, powerful rocks, just like the oh, Marvel goodness, universe yeah. did. They're just copying them like that. I didn't know it. Obviously, it happened way before. Yeah, technically, right? Well, they're ripping off the infinity. They're, but they're, he, yeah, there's some dumb the people that are saying they're ripping. Right? This was he creates the the Silmarils probably in the 1920s. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or if not before, um, it's inevitable though. But I like your point you made before that because they already introduced doing prequels and going out of timelines with the Star Wars mm-hmm. movies that people wouldn't be put out by that. They could follow that because they know they're already used to that. So you don't have to necessarily go sequentially. And I think also too, when you, you're going to start a movie, you're going to put a date and the age, you know, I think that in itself might have to be part of uh, to be in context to have the first age, second age, third age, so that you know, you know, stay with a certain age at one time, and still you can then you can move around. And you're you're gonna you're gonna have to roll with like cheap exposition. I mean, even Lord of the Rings was doing it to keep the movies within four hours. You know, like we would pause and like Galadriel will tell us what's happening. Like, okay, just so you can remember. The power of the enemy is growing. Sauron's going to use his puppet Saruman to enslave yeah. Rohan. This is where we're at. But you have these anchor characters who can be yeah. all kinds of places. Like, you can have Galadriel, a very young Galadriel, or a very young yes. Gandalf, and people are going to understand that. that. And, and, you know, that's you just made a great point. And one of those things that is going to be at the end of this movie... At the end of War of the Rohirrim? Rohirrim is going to be the introduction of Saruman. Oh, I just got chills. Because right this. after, as right after the the battle for the Hornburg, and they go, they retake Metaselt. Saruman shows up, oh and he and he, and he lifts he's Rohan that you're so brave and bold and whatever. Uh-huh. And, and and the king of the king of Gondor actually had finally shown up because they defeated. They were they didn't show up right away because they were in a battle with the corsairs and they couldn't come to their rescue. Until once they did, they showed up in time for the end of the battle. And then then Saruman's there and he's giving all this stuff. So the king of Rohan himself, not not the Rohirrim, he gives. Isengard to at that time to uh, Saruman wow. right after those battles. So it's going to be that you know. So are you going to try to go for the uh, the job? Are, are you kidding me? <laughs> I uh, that would be it. Well, well, I think you need those anchors. You Helm, need to figure Helm out is something. Helm is an important character, mm-hmm. and Rohan's important. Uh, 
uh, people and it's good introductory people. But to, if you, you have to finish that up with that tie in that lets everybody, it makes it seem, uh, so much more familiar for people who have seen it now and they're like, oh, I know him. It's Sar you know, Sar mm -hmm. now here's Saruman. And then you get that context of how long he's been around and how long he's been in Isengard. And, and, you know. I mean, in the extended versions, um, I actually just, I watched in passing the, the Two Towers and Return of the King before recording this. And and when they put back in the, the death of Saruman into Return of the King, he has a whole conversation with Theoden and talks about, can we not take counsel together as we once did, my and old he, friend? That is as can we book. not have that peace, part is you and I? Book. But there, there's an implied long-term relationship with Rohan, Rohan and, and yes. Saruman. So, yes. I mean, to me, like you have to do it. And that really helps anchor where this is in the timeline. Yeah, oh, here's Saruman, he's a good guy. Even at the time, like... Uh, the Rohir might not have been so happy that they that they gave him Isengard, except they realized they liked the fact that they had a powerful ally against the Dunlingers. Mm -hmm. You know, so that so they were cool with it. But I think they also felt that it should have been theirs because I think it was part of their realm. Is time. this these Dunlingers are is those like the yes. cavemen yes. looking people that yes. that he sent? Interesting. So that really the hillmen, the hillmen, yeah. not the cavemen, because there That's is, what I meant, there is the, a, because there is a there is a caveman type of people, the oh, Hugel oh, men that they leave out of the movies that yeah. the Rohirrim encounter later on their way to help Gondor, which is a whole other thing, and I know nobody probably wants to hear about it because it's not in the movies. But they were interesting yeah. people. Well, you said the horsemen Bond, took what their, is it? Bond Berry Gond Berry Gond. The guy's name was the king of the of the. Hugel people, they called them, and they look. The description of them was like a very caveman-like kind interesting. of people. Interesting. You know, one thing I was just thinking about that's going to be interesting is that Peter Jackson's doing it, and they said they want it to be similar, everything similar to to like the, the Lord of the Rings films. If if you know they correlate, mm -hmm. so does that mean if we get people like Saruman and Gandalf and Galadriel that they have to look like those actors? And does that mean we have yeah. Kate Blanchett and? Yes. And other people like reprising their roles in the animation too for for the films. Well, and I think it makes it a lot easier because, you know, I mean, even uh, uh, what's his name, um, Ian Ian McKellen. Yeah. You know, I don't think people realize he's he was fifty nine. Yeah. You know what he was doing. He's my age. That's so crazy to me. Wow. And he's so he's not even that old really right now. He yeah. can he can still go and do that. He's such a good actor, and to do it that way mm -hmm. and one thing for certain is if you're going to get John John Reese Davies had said he would never put on the makeup again right but now he doesn't have to yeah. so it allows him to do yeah. other parts and you know he's got such a great voice he did you know he did Fanghorn mm -hmm. or Treebeard yeah um I wouldn't be surprised if he plays Helm the Hammerhand or something. <laughs> oh, what a great voice, <laughs> great voice he has for it, right? Yeah. Well, why not? Yeah, you know, he did multiple voices already, so you know he might do he and, and you know it would actually be fitting for him to do somebody like Doran because right. because the the seven kings of the dwarves get re, are the one, only ones that get reincarnated as the dwarves. They keep coming back. Mm -hmm. If you look at the line too, it's Doran the first, Doran the second, yeah. but it's, it's supposedly the same person. Huh. They actually get reincarnated. They're hmm. the ones that were created by what is his name it's funny I almost got it mixed up with a with a Marvel character I was going to say Olmo but I think it is Olmo what am I talking about I don't know he's, he's like the they're really more like Man angelic Man beings but they're considered like demigods Man Manwee's son Man, no no Manwee or is like lord of the air and this guy was lord of the, the earth and the rocks and that's why he created the, the dwarves so powerful because he created them from you know and the way they looked not, not, they didn't look right because he was creating them out of his own imagination he hadn't seen what um, Eru was how he was going to create the elves and men he just kind of was imagining in his own mind and then you know when Eru comes over and says what have you done you know and he said oh, well he's like I was just I was impatient and he goes don't don't you know don't be angry at me I was just just thinking of it as a child you know trying to imitate his father and so he goes I'll, I'll destroy them and he raised and he had created the seven of them and he raised his hammer and they quailed and Eru says well, stop he goes look they already have life in them see how they quail when you raise your hammer he goes but I will not tolerate that they come before my firstborn so I'm going to put them asleep until the coming of the elves. Hmm. So he allows them to be beings, 
but he but not but he puts them back to sleep and doesn't allow them to be beings until he actually the elves come. So it, was, it was an interesting part of that. A lot of abstract concepts that are p- perhaps difficult to even do in in live action. So yeah. perhaps they're they're better relegated. Maybe, to but it was interesting anyway. too because one of the things he they, even the explanation of it at least mm-hmm. because it said because of how they were made of a tougher thing of earth they were able to. Uh, to to be hard, they were hardier than other folk, and withstood hardship better, and were able to withstand the dragons better. Hmm. And in fact, when you see in the early times when they first fight the the fireworms, first come in, it's it's the uh, it's it's the dwarves with their masks and their 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 armor that go in and kill are able to kill the dragons, hmm. and even the elves couldn't withstand the fire the fire of the dragon. Yeah, you know. Oh. And then it's in one part, I think one of the kings is slain in the battle and the dwarves just pick him up and they go into like mourning into like, uh, you know, and they're like chant- chanting as they leave the field. And they said everybody was so afraid of them at that point because they had killed the fire that nobody stopped them or even approached them as they just carried their, they just, ca- they just marched away and carried their king off. It's an amazing part of the early uh, battles oh. against uh, Melkor. Yeah. So I'll be be a great movie, especially in in animation. You know? Oh yeah, uh, yeah because everything should be right. Everything's be act- should yeah. everything should be right. Yeah. After no, no excuses. Yeah, I, I you know I underst- always understood why they shortened a lot uh, in Lord of the Rings and even left out parts. I I, I, I had an issue with some of the good characters being mm-hmm. cut out, like um, um, Glorfindel, Tom Bombadil. Well, Tom Bombadil, Glorfindel, those are great examples, but also the um, Prince Imra, Imra oh, oh, yes, yes. And Aragorn, when the 40, when the 40 Dunedin come with mm-hmm. El, the sons of Elrond, Elrohir and uh, Aladdin mm-hmm. come and they go, you know, it's interesting too, because it's the whole, like, Tolkien loves to have other stories that seem like they've just lost their way over time. And this was Aragorn going into the this mountain right this yeah. cave where there's jewels and stuff but i mean it's paths of the dead yeah. but with aladdin and the 40 dunedin it's mm. like aladdin and the 40 thieves huh. kind of a thing because to the rest of the world the dunedin were like vagabonds you yeah. know not not that they were the descendants of numenair from the north yeah you know and an interesting part about that too is that the gondor gondor had kept their, oh, everybody knew they were descendants of Numenor, but their blood had been thinned out over time. Mm-hmm. The Dunedin weren't. And mm-hmm. they, they were, and there was a, you know, there were some great characters in there. In fact, Aragorn's best friend was one of the guys who shows up there. And he's slain in the Peldor fields. And it's another sad part, just, you know, you know, they and they left out some good characters. And this this marshal of the, of Rohan, who I was talking about also, who they, they, they compared to, to Helm. Yeah. Uh, so there's a few characters that I'm like, well, I don't see how you had to, but I know for for the time constraints, I understood Bombadil's difficult to explain, so they didn't do him in the animated version either. So they're you know, yeah. so Bombadil so so, so I, I I get that and they wanted they wanted um, Arwen's character to be more involved, which so that's understandable. But one of the things that was kind of weird in the movies was that they kept giving lines to different people yeah like what was the point to that you know actually if i had if i had one complaint of the entire movie that i wanted them to want, would want them to undo it, and and it, it should be the pelor fields won by aragon uh Aymer and Imrahil without the help of the dead because the dead take the ships that's fine but you know it's not fine but it, but it seems, I, it seems it cheapened it though because it's it. like it cheapens his victory oh, okay. yeah because they're like okay we just we unleashed all the ghosts well they cheapened a lot of things in that way because they when aragon actually had the strength because the the uh, palantir belonged to him mm. you know he was the rightful heir and he was able to wrest the control of the palantir from Saruman, and that's not what they do mm. and that's so that was annoying but also amr Amor was supposed to have this such a grace of the Numenarians of old, oh, and and um, Sam actually says, you know, you remind me almost of the wizards. Like he had this, this, uh, uh, this, this. Uh, I don't know. Um, like an air about him. Air about him. Sorry, yeah. 
sorry, my I can't remember words sometimes lately. This air about him that that, that Sam saw that him, you know, you know, he might not have been the warrior his brother was, but he had, but he was a great warrior and he was a great leader of men. And he was well loved and he had this power. He was able to let the ring go, mm -hmm. and the only other people, the only other one was able to let the ring go was Aragorn, and they both were able. They they do show Aragorn let the ring go, mm -hmm. and he tells Frodo, "I would have." I went you to the mm -hmm. to the mouth of dude. Well, well, Amir does that too. So it kind of cheapens who Amir was. I hit Amir him, or Faramir. Oh, Faramir. I'm sorry, Faramir. I'm sorry, yeah. Faramir. It cheapens who Faramir was. That he he that they have him in the movie, the films, like wanting the ring. Yeah. <laughs> to be to be fair, I mean, it wasn't necessarily in the movie. It wasn't necessarily, I want the ring for myself, kind of wanting the ring. He was like, my dad's a piece of crap, and I need to get him the ring, and he yeah, it was all, but it was all But it almost made him like, oh, look, Daddy, look what I did. That's not who he was. I, I understand. You know, no. I mean, and the other person was, was, was Bombadil. Yes. Who was able to, like, even make the ring disappear and make it come back. And he and, put it on and left. Yeah, and he put it on, didn't disappear, and he left. And so... He, I and I, again, it's great because nobody has been able to explain well who Bombadil okay. really is. Right. Anyway, how about how about I have a better explanation for Goldberry than I do for 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 Bombadil. What do you mean? Well, but she's called the River Daughter. Okay. So to me, I believe not not from not from the the the, the god who runs the oceans, but the one who runs the rivers. Okay. Uh, like I just think it's, she's simply that she's simply his daughter. I mean, you don't have to explain anything. Um, no, but who is Bombadil? Doesn't matter. You know, because he had a personality like Tolkis, but obviously he's not Tolkis. But it, I think, just, I, I don't Robin understand Williams. why everybody, yes, I know, I always say that. <laughs> I, I don't understand why everyone's so worried about explaining it. There's nothing to explain, just do it and, and let people talk about like, what is uh, well, this? Well, I agree, I'd love to have him. Okay, so I had a crazy idea. You do Untold Tales from the Lord of the Rings, so you go back and you have Elijah Wood and everyone come back and then like, okay, right in between here, we went and we talked to Bombadil and you yeah. do like an animated, yeah. like they right. went off the beaten right. path. That's good. And then you can I go like here that, especially since you do animated. But yeah. also too, it, 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 one of the interesting parts about that is too later after he lets, he gives the the hobbits uh, ponies and, and, and food and stuff to go along the way and they go to the Barrow Downs and they fall asleep because they're, they're running around the Barrow Downs and they're captured by the Barrow Whites, he he rescues them. But while he's there, he he finds some swords for them. Mm -hmm. They're small daggers. He goes, these are good hobbits. These were daggers, but they're, they're like swords for the hobbits. And then what he gives to Merry was specifically made to kill the Witch King. Mm -hmm. It had runes upon it and a spell upon it to to uh, break the spell of uh, of the witch king and the sinew from flesh and if he hadn't oh, if he hadn't stabbed the witch king in his hamstring or whatever he did yeah Eowyn wouldn't have been able to kill him yep so, so yeah. it's so I important know. that that's where he got the bleed from yeah yeah no yeah. I know and that, was, and that was something I was really good at like Aragorn's like here's some swords and that was kind of yeah yeah. Like, where'd you get those yeah no, it doesn't it doesn't even matter but I mean they kind oh, of oh yeah at Weathertop or something right yeah, it was, that, it was at Weathertop. Yeah, they I did think. it at Weathertop. All they had was 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 firebrands. They took sticks out of the fire to 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 try to ward off those the a few of the uh, the dark right you know the black riders. Mm -hmm. But they do it kind of explain it in the movie because when he stabs him, the blade disappears, right? And he it hurts his hand because when Mary goes to stab him, Mary gets hurt. Yeah, and yeah, the blade his arm goes numb. numb. His arm goes numb, and his and his the the I'm pretty sure the blade disappears when he stabs him. Now, am I wrong though? Yeah, they they I leave so. out the, the houses of the healing. They right? They it's it's relegated to just to, like uh, the little brief, a little B roll well, sequence. Yeah, between uh, they do it. Faramir and 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 uh, Eowyn, right? They do a little. Well, doesn't but, somebody grab a sponge and like Aragorn like rubs water on people, and that's it. And then, oh, just, but then all of a sudden they, they hold hands, yeah. And then, I was like, yeah, okay, but he, you're he, he's now. supposed to get have them get the him athletes. But how, you're you're at the climax of the thing. We're gonna sit yeah. here and be like, well, well, okay. this interesting part of that was it's Aragon first shows up and then all of a sudden, which was weird even in the book that then you know, he shows up with his flag and then all of a sudden he's trying to be some ranger. 
But then he goes in and he goes to the house of healing and starts healing somebody. And just before that, there's one maiden in the, or maid, I should say, she's an older woman, who's in the house of the healing. And she says, if only there were a, a king, a true king in Gondor, because they said of old, the hands of the king are the hands of the healer. And, and therefore, the, the rightful king would be known. Mm-hmm. And Gandalf says to her, your, lo- your words may long be remembered. And I think that he actually sends for Aragorn. And Aragorn comes and he makes sure they get some athletes and he starts going around and he starts healing. And even even the, uh, the smell in the room makes everybody refreshed of putting the, the, the what they called king's foil. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny because um, Sam never called it that earlier on when he got asked to make it of athletes. I don't believe he did in the book. But they called it king's foil. Oh, it's, you know, and so... It, and he goes around healing people, mm-hmm. and including a a a Eowyn mm-hmm. and Faramir. Yeah. So, and it's an important part of showing it. Oh, yeah, he is the rightful heir. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot to jam. I mean, Return of the King, especially, has has a lot jammed in there. And to go with your uh, your idea of you know going getting everyone back, you know the hobbits and stuff to, yeah. to redo those parts. Yeah. The good thing is. It shouldn't cost too much because their careers haven't gone anywhere since then. Oh, so oh. Uh, <laughs> especially Elijah. No, I think he's the only one who's kind of no. Did I think some Mary, things. Um, was it Mary? Mary, that Mary was in, and lost. Lost the, the lost. Was he done since lost? Nothing. Oh, no, 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 I don't know. That, that at least was an extended thing, right? No, about Pippa. Yeah, no, no, nothing. I just Where's saw them Billy recently Boyd? too on. Um, Josh Gates is one of his shows. He had them on. And no. they're actually working together on something. I forgot what it was. Oh, that's good. Yeah, Marianne Pippin. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, what's done a lot of things. A lot of things are just like, they bombed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like there's a lot of things I remember him being in, and there was like, that didn't do that well. well. Even, yeah. even when Sin was, City wasn't that good. Just, you know? No, I liked... Was, uh, I think Sin City's underrated. The first one, anyway. I haven't seen the, the new one, but like, I, I'd watch that movie all the time. I think it almost came out too soon. I think it would have been more uh, widely. Uh, I think it would have been better received now if it had come out better than at the time it came out, because because of the type of genre and stuff. I think that kind of thing is more in now than it was then. You yeah. know, I, I think the, I think the fact that they even got people to go is because they had a good cast. Yeah, but I think it would have, I think it would have done better now. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have things like even like The Witcher and those kind of, you know, there's a lot more of that kind of stuff going on yeah. now. And to have cannibals or whatever, you know, with, with all the zombie things out now, mm. that I think it would have went, I think it would have been bigger now. Yeah. And they shouldn't have waited so long to do a sequel, too, because there was just way too much time in between. But if people want, you know, a Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe, you know, that's not Marvel. And obviously DC can't do it. So who's who's going to do it? I mean, they're trying to, Netflix is trying to do it with the Mark Miller universe, but they just canceled season two of Jupiter's Legacy. So like, they oh, can't wow. even, they can't even make things stick. And, yeah. and I don't know if it's because nobody's like taking the time to just like, oh, this didn't immediately work. I'm just going to cancel it or reboot. Are we delving any more into what's coming out? What do we know? So, I mean, that's, that's all we know. This was unexpected. Yeah, um, it's a, it's gonna follow Helm the Hammer Hands. Are we ruining anything a, by telling too much already? Well, this is what we should expect, right? So, right. but well, I, I mean, mean, I mean, like the the outcomes and stuff. Maybe not go go too we far. Did, I mean, we did, we did he, mention some of the some of it we didn't yeah. mention. Intentionally, I didn't get into it. I but, mean, you, you want you want to see it adapted, you know, and you, you want to see it done right, you yeah. know. I think it's. I don't know. I think it's interesting. Because I can't to, even talk about the, 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 the mounds of the kings behind Rohan without giving anything away. Yeah. Then. Yeah. I mean, I guess. You understand what I'm talking about, right? I, I think so. Because, yeah. like, I, I don't want to. Well, you. I don't want to say. Well, you can edit much. this out, right? Yes, I can. Well, you know, Helm, Helm dies is the last of his line because his son had already died. Mm. So his nephew becomes the next king and they start a new mound and, and that line comes standing. in. Gotcha. So, but it was interesting because remember, uh, Thad and talking about the the white flowers symbol symbol mine mm-hmm. that grows into a five sided flowers, five white mm-hmm. flower. Well, they said so much had grown on Helm's grave that it looked like snow. Wow. So, but 
but that's where that comes in context. So I was actually like, what is he talking about? I didn't even remember that part. Yeah. So I actually think they got that out of the appendices. Yeah. Talking about the symbol mind always has always grown on the on the on the grapes. But so there was there was these and there weren't nine because I think Ural maybe was buried in Gondor and his and the third well no the the third son Balder dies in the Peasant Dead, but then his younger brother becomes I think it might be Alder, who becomes uh, the third king, and he's called the Old because he, s- he ended up being king for seventy five years hmm. because he took the throne so yeah. young. But so that line is on one side behind wherever and that is held, and then it started another line with with that leads up the Thane and yeah. on the other side because it came from his nephew, mm-hmm. which is very English. You see. A lot of stuff from his coming out of the you know British thing. Even even when you see the descents of how he says he, they're related to the Bjornings and the and the people of Dale, because they say even among those people today, you still see some tall tall blonde people will be in there because they've mixed more with other races. Mm-hmm. But it almost seems to me like we were talking about uh, the Norse and then the English and the French and these mixtures that all have Nordic blood. You yeah. know. Yeah. So, but in this line too, like when that happened, even with the houses of the Tudors, mm-hmm. and when Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth I dies, her nephew becomes king. It's a new house, and mm-hmm. it's a nephew, just like this. To be clear, it we're becomes, talking about real life now. Yeah, King James I, right? And it becomes a new, ha- new, ha- new line. So anyway, and that's how you get new line cinemas. Oh, oh boy. Wow, Lance! You always have to <laughs> have another drink. <laughs> really, really brought brought that together there. So there's there's one thing I kind of want to want to touch on before we before we wrap this up, um, unless we make an extended version. Um, so I I think I, I had to have mentioned this in passing at some point. I I feel like I had to um, in some of the last hundred or so episodes of Nightcap Chat, the pop culture podcast. Oh my goodness, there is a net. Okay, that was distracting. Wow, you, you can't just, you can't hold it together. It's just a mat in the room. Come on. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Okay. And 10 so, minutes for me. Yes. So, there was, I've, of all of the, the Lord of the Rings or, or Tolkien's fans I've come across, I have never in my entire life met anybody who was familiar with this official Lord of the Rings uh officially licensed piece of work and and it's just so crazy to me i just want to briefly briefly talk about it for a second there was an ms dos game back in the day yeah. that they did with lord of the rings yeah, and there was a two tower that. sequel yeah. and like nobody has played it but yeah. for the time like it was an rpg yeah like ahead of its time yep. I, i've tried to port it like my goodness i tried to try to play it on my uh, my PS2, and I didn't have enough RAM because I had two whole RAM back then. What do you mean PS2? <clears throat> oh, the computer was actually called a PS2 because oh, get it was, yeah, because it had two RAM. It was like a big deal compared to like 640K. I was like wow. so happy I had two RAM of memory in my computer. Oh my and it, gosh. it couldn't really run. This was a uh, a DOS game. Yeah. yeah. And it couldn't really run. It would keep freezing. It was, did you ever play it? It was kind of cool. Yeah, but, I played it a little bit, but it was kind of. I didn't really get it because I was so young and you were a little, and it was actually it would scare me. I'm not. I'm not even joking. Like, like there are certain parts what, I was like, oh my what, god. What, okay, so what, what are you talking about that comes from this? That they they made a. Like, you're just saying nobody knows about this game. Like nobody ever knows about. It. I don't know. Oh I've goodness. never besides us. I never met anyone who's played it. Just heard of well, it. Like, ring, yeah, I've no wow, idea that's amazing. About. The ring race used to scare me when I was a little kid. Like when you were like Frodo and you're like walking around and then like yeah. the ring race show up. It was, I just, I just, it was scary because wasn't there? There was scary. noise, right? Wasn't there like yeah, da, 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 yeah like it was freaky. Da, 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 da. Yeah. How old were you? Four? I probably. <laughs> but I remember freaky. thinking, and you, do you guys go? You get stuck at. You didn't you get stuck at the same part all the I mean, time? It was really were, hard. You no, guys eventually, were playing, no. He, you know, he he beat it. The, he he was the first one who got through it. Because yeah, I mean yeah, there was a part where he got stuck. Um, what was it in Moria or something? It was, I, it was a game, I, I feel like a game would freeze out sometimes. It would freeze sometimes yeah, because it just. Yeah. That's the, the it would have helped it a lot if I had you know one of these like four RAM computers instead. <laughs> 
Uh, it took some creative liberties. And to be fair, like you could technically I think calculators do a lot with you. Four, right? Yes. Yeah. You, you could do a lot of what you want because you could recruit people along the way. Like you didn't have to right. stick to the fellowship because right. you could recruit right. Bill the Pony. And then you, you know what else too is that. you also found out sometimes along the way that somebody wasn't so good. Mm-hmm. And then you went back from that spot and you did it and this time you didn't pick them up. Or you used them for something and they got rid of them. Yeah, there was a... There was some chick, right? Yeah, but she, yeah, and like she betrays you if yeah. you get to a certain point. So you so have you to unrecruit to her, un- recruit but her. she's really powerful. She's so powerful. She she's, helpful. she's helpful, but you have no one to like ditch her. You know what's crazy? I remember all this. I remember, but I remember all this stuff happening just watching. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Like, I remember you guys, but oh, they, she betrayed me. Well, I don't whatever. know if it was her or a different character because she had like a white hand, like medallion or like equipped to her. That was like a magical thing of the white hand. Like, wait, that's that's Saruman. Like she's in league with, with Saruman, you know? I don't know if it was her, this this yeah, random her, woman yeah. or, or someone else, but you can also like recruit like... A, and she was supposed to be some kind of elf or something, but she must have been a dark elf. Something, you know, something. something. She, she, I think she was. She was. But magic. it's weird though because like like a dark elf isn't even mentioned. In, I mean, I know this is before Lord of the Rings and everything, but even the animated Lord of the Rings, which had come out way before this, they don't ever mention dark elves. Dark elves and stuff like that are only mentioned in the Silmarillion. Interesting. So whoever was making it had an understanding of the Silmarillion yeah, and those kind yeah. of things. So he, they included a character like that. Well, they had Radgast in it. And That's you could true. recruit him. Uh, like, he was one of the better characters to just yeah, keep right. around. Yep. I remember having You're him right. and Glorfindel. And I left Legolas, I think, behind. <laughs> I think. Maybe not. Did Boromir... Can you save Gandalf or Boromir? Like, wasn't there something like that? Somebody was supposed to die, but you can, like, actually get past that part if you defeat the Balrog or... Or something. something. I think I think that we learned that we could actually fight the Balrog. Because if you put in the effort to yeah. defeat him, to Gandalf doesn't die. Not go by the book, yeah. which is bad. But there was there was cutscenes to the original uh, Lord of the Rings animated movie that would freeze. Yeah. You know? So this yeah. must have. So I mean, it goes to show you, like even then, they had a video game to go along with the the movie, which yeah. is which play, is play pretty video interesting. Or whatever. I guess yeah, didn't you have the option not to play because it was like play video? Well, yeah, I think so because you would want to skip it because there was like a 80% chance it would freeze. So yeah. you'd have to yeah, And then you'd, you'd cut back to wherever you saved it last. Yes, yes. I think it's when we started learning you had to just keep saving games. You know? <laughs> Say, wait, stop, save. Okay, control, now let's go. Let's control us. Control, yeah. I remember Gimli had a hat. I think you could recruit Bombadil, couldn't you? Oh, Maybe. Or is he just a spell? Because there was Bombadil was a command. It's like when you when you ran into oh, like right. with the rays, you do Bombadil. I would go. She would make like a little magic noise. Well, you know what? That's because he. That's what he tells the yeah, hobbits yeah. in the book is is you, he taught them a song that mm-hmm. he would come and mm-hmm. rescue them if they yeah. sang it. So that's hilarious. This these you know what? What's weird? Like that game. Lord of the Rings, the Third Age, and Lord of the Rings, War in the North. Those are three of, like, my best, like, my favorite games ever, and they're RPGs. What was that game me and you played? It was the Third Age. And we just, you know, it's so funny, because I'm so conservative. We played this game for, like, a week, and we had fought the Witch King once and got our asses kicked, and then I was like... The Witch King? Which or game? Sauron. The Eye of Sauron. Was that that's what it was? So then we go back all the way and start realizing, let's pick up everything we can from every level and get back. And we took our time and got everything and built everybody and built everybody up so incredibly much that it made the end anti and so it's climatic. We just kicked his ass in like no time. We didn't even get hurt. It was like yeah. we, just get, we just built every. We just everybody was so overloaded with yeah. so much stuff. It was that was a it was a good game. I don't know if it quite holds up as I liked, much. What I liked about it was we were able to take your time. Yes, and, and for me it was less yeah. stressful because it's not this action thing. It was a, about decisions, and I love that because it took us like a week. It made it an adventure. Mm-hmm. 
So I thought it was cool. I liked it. I know that's that's why I like turn based uh, fighting because it's, it's it's about strategy, not how fast you can right. do you're, combinations you're thumbs, and, right, and right, push sure. A. Um, the the thing that threw me off and I didn't remember is that when you're playing it together, you may both be there, but only one person can Walks. can yeah. travel. Like yeah. that's that's the hardest thing to swallow as far as modern video games right. are right. are concerned. Right. right. And, and, well, too, I think it's part of. Uh, not to pick on this this generation, but um, you, you're a generation that learns how to multitask so well that they, that kind of a thing would be boring. Like they want to be part of it, and they want to you know get it. And I think you know it's not it's not an insult; it's a compliment. This generation I, I found can multitask so incredibly well that they want to do so many other things at the same time. Nobody wants to be sitting back while the other guy's moving. Wait. Yes. Okay. Now it's your turn, and now just make a decision on what kind of tag mm, you're going to use. Yeah. So, but for me, I oh, yeah. no, yeah, it was like a game. It was perfect. It was perfect. It was like yeah. a game. Chess. It absolutely it really is. Was, you know, so. And it was and it was interesting, and it, it goes to show. You, I mean, like Lord of the Rings games have been around longer than people realize. I mean, yeah. Sure, I'm talking yeah. slightly, but I mean, we're talking MS DOS right. games. You know, I mean, that's that's the original. You know, it was Wolfenstein. The, the 80s, and, probably. Yeah, and and it, Wolfenstein. Uh, yeah, that was definitely the eighties. Mm-hmm. A game like like Lord of the Rings: War in the North. That game was fun. Like it was super short, and it was like it was it was similar to the Third Age, where it's like it was a Lord of the Rings story, but it was like it was following the story, but of other people like helping in the background. It really had nothing to do with like the Lord of the Rings kind of a thing. But it was kind of cool that like you would end up going to like uh, you would go, and the Fellowship just left. Um, Oh my gosh. Rivendell, like, just Rivendell, yeah. And Bilbo's sitting there and you can go up to Bilbo yeah, and talk yeah, to him. And you're like, him, yeah. you're like, hey Bilbo, what's going on? And he's like, hey, Oh, uh you know, I really wish I had like these certain items uh right, yeah, what yeah. to make whatever. And then like you go on, you do your journey, and then you can bring it back to him. And then if you give it to him, he gives you like this special thing that you yep. can put into like one of your Which weapons so and it cool. makes it like super strong. Yeah. Yeah, but if cool. you don't talk if you don't talk to him between like a certain level, like between like like oh level four and level five, you can't talk to him. You can't even get that mission. So like there's like you have to wow. make sure you're going around taking your time to talk to everybody before wow. you go move yeah, on to the next thing. Kind of just like say the same dumb thing over again, but there was always people that would give you something yeah. that would help you wow. out. Wow. You know? Wow. But it was cool because you could go back or whatever. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. that part's fun. You know, it's funny. You were talking about Wolfenstein. Mm-hmm. That, it, in, the, in the beginning, being called that, and later on, it was the same game as Duke Nukem. It really was the same game. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. The, the 3D one. Yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, the early but, one was I mean, kind of just a little oh, bit of a chubby game. And, same thing with Doom. Like, they were all that. Yeah, like, that. this was, that was the beginning of the first. so nauseous yeah. in this game. Imagine, so you'd yeah. always have to like you wanted to find everything, so you'd be running along the wall really fast, Which is the trying same to thing. find, and you'd see it at night when you're sleeping. And I would get sick even at night just seeing it in my head. It would literally get me nauseous yeah. because you didn't want to miss any mm-hmm. any uh, thing behind a wall or a special mm-hmm. entrance way or an item. Yep. So you go through every level, checking, just zooming down the thing, spamming spacebar. Oh open. my goodness! It may, I'm making me. I'm actually getting sick thinking about it. <laughs> Great. That was like 35 years ago. But uh, no, nobody ever brings up those DOS games. So any Lord of the Rings fans out there uh, listening, like I just want to put that on your radar. If you can figure those out a way to find Seal, it. Right? Seal games. They were was the company. Is that how it? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Seal. But I think those no Seal idea. games were like um, some of your other games, like the Word like games. Word Rescue. And Word Rescue. And the, like Pinball. Yeah. You what can, was that other one with the... You can get Word Rescue on Steam. Can you really? Yeah. Get out. What was that other one? Fribbles? Are you sure you can't get the Lord of the Rings game on Steam? No, I'm talking about no, I'm not. Right? I'm going to look Remember it up that? right now. Yes. Uh, this, this Tribble. No. Fribble. Fribble. No, Tribble is Tribble. the Star Trek, right? Star Trek. Yeah, Fribble. Fribbles. This Fribble is orange with stripes. It has sunglasses. Oh, my God. And curly hair. Right? That's, oh, that's yep, how it was. Yep. <laughs> you, oh, my God. <laughs> Like, right? Did that that's, just exactly, that's exactly I, how it's. I, how did I? I, 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 I can't believe I remember the name of it. 
that, that, that was that was Rebels. the exact. Yeah. I you know it's funny. I thought about that a few months ago. For for I came across like you should look at the a list of seal games. I don't think yeah. the Lord of the Rings ones was. A, what was the name of the Lord of the Rings? Lord game? of the Rings. That's all. It was false. Yes. Yeah. And the, and then the two towers was the sequel, and that was it. Which we never played. We had a demo. Yeah. Where you go and then you right. can get to Gandalf, and that's it. Right. That was and it. You have to play the. But you could play the like. Thing. A little, one little room or something. Yeah, is it? yeah, yeah. I would love to maybe try the two towers or figure out how to even get a DOS game to, to work. I, I don't know. I'm yeah. sure. I'll, I know. I can Google it, but I I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll you can probably play actually. DOS games on your phone. Well, I got, well, here's the thing though. I I got to figure out how to get a floppy disk <laughs> to work. Like, yeah, and I I really think this means if this goes well, they will do more fun things. I think they would definitely do. Oh, yeah. uh, well, it's on them to make this one do this one well, so that they can yeah. do well, better. Yeah. The other yes. ones, which exactly. will be even better, you know? exactly. Because the exactly. other stories are great. Yeah. And if you've never read the Silmarillion and you've read Lord of the Rings, or even if you haven't read the Silmarillion, mm-hmm. uh, the first couple chapters are a little slow because it's all about the creation. The one thing about the Silmarillion was it should have been volumes. So it was it was it was published posthumously for Tolkien. So his sons Christopher and Michael really uh, condensed it, which can make names and stuff confusing, but it makes it really exciting, and you're always something going on. It's really incredible stuff from ages well way before uh, what when Lord of the Rings occurred. And you know what? Like if you're sitting there, like uh, maybe I want to read it. I don't like reading. There's some great audiobooks. There are. Uh, even on even on it's even on uh, uh, YouTube you, is available to the unabridged mm-hmm. Silmarillion is on YouTube. Well, you can listen to the whole thing. Well, even the other I don't know if we we'll call them spinoff books or whatever, like Children of Huron. You you can get the Children of Huron book narrated by Christopher Lee. Oh, wow. which I mean, who and doesn't I, want Christopher Lee? That was the best done, them? I think, of all the books. <laughs> oh my goodness! Like, I I have it. I haven't listened to it. Yet. I haven't even read it yet. I have the, all the editions over there on my bookshelf. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be good stuff. Uh, not a lot to read to get ready for. Yeah. And that's uh, what you said is a great idea because the children who are in is a couple of chapters in Silmarillion, and it's so well. It's not that it's even that it's expounded upon. It's expounded upon compared to Silmarillion, but it's actually Tolkien's writings because yeah. Tolkien spent his entire life writing these yeah. things from a time of his childhood, and it wasn't even completed when he passed away in his eighties. So. You know, it's just amazing stuff. If you're looking forward to this movie, you know, if you think there's uh, there's more uh, movies to be had, let us know what you're most looking forward to uh, on social media. We're at Nightcap Chat on Facebook. And you can let us know on Twitter, too, but we don't use it too much. And Nightcap underscore chat on Instagram. And I'm Lance, and you can catch me on Twitch or Instagram and Twitter at Tales of Lance. But we appreciate you all taking the time to listen. We love you. Be safe. And we will catch you all next week. Have a good week. God bless you.